same way. The, the COVID lockdowns and the, the colossal failure of 20 years in Afghanistan and the way that we left people behind, it, it all kind of feels the same to me because it's us versus them. It's right versus wrong. And, and I also think, and this is what I want to talk to you about today, because you've, you've been, um, you've had a busy month hmm. and you've, you've been on the ground in Afghanistan. And I want to talk about your efforts with the Nazarene Fund. And, and importantly, you know, there is sort of a lesson here about private action versus public action, hmm. because government at its best still does all these things we just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe it's not at its best. Maybe it has an agenda other than ours, and you always have to take that seriously. But I think the reason you got so much blowback from the corporate press in your efforts is that you exposed the lie that we can't get our people out. Do you think that's fair? Oh, yeah. I think they're teaching, they're trying to teach everyone a lesson. Sit down, shut up, and take it. You don't have the power. And that's what's been so heartening about this is, I mean, you know, Matt, I mean, I don't have big corporations or big donors that are stepping up. Here's a million dollars. We raised $35 million from my audience alone. And they came in in checks of five, ten, a hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. I think the biggest donation we had was 300,000 and we had one. Um, uh, and it's, it's pretty remarkable uh, what happened, but they are absolutely trying to teach us, you cannot do it. And I had a hard time with this at the very beginning. I thought they can't be that petty, you know, lives are at stake. This is different. Um, but it is, Uh, um, what happened, um, a couple of weeks ago on that Tuesday is the, the day before it's actually the, on Tuesday, I found out on Wednesday, Tuesday, um, we had four planes on the tarmac in, um, uh, in Afghanistan when everyone was looking at Kabul and that was closing. We knew two days before we're not going to get any more planes out. How else do we do it? Well, there's another airport and no, almost no Taliban were there. And so we started moving people across the country to get them to that airport. There were uh, five major checkpoints. We had people on the ground um, navigating, radioing back and forth. We had people in safe houses. We moved 1,200 people in two days, unbeknownst to anyone. And we had moved them uh, just outside of the airport. Then we got them on the plane. This was Cam Air. And we rented a bunch or bought a bunch of the tickets, all of the tickets on these planes. And we're just like, no, no, just go over there. Here's your ticket. Get on the plane. And it was working until the State Department figured it out. The Taliban hadn't figured it out. The State Department. I had 1,200 people sitting in four airplanes, um, over 100 Americans. The numbers will astound you when we come out with who's on that plane who are on that plane and who's about to get on to more planes um and the state department jerked around and jerked around and our guy was saying he is actually the guy who eventually started running all commercial flights out of kabul okay he's now in charge of all commercial flights in afghanistan um he's an american but he's been coordinating all of these flights to get people out. It's, it's an amazing miracle, just that. And he calls the State Department. He's like, let these planes go. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Let them go. You're calling attention to this. And they said, well, now, wait a minute. Who's on? They said, we've already filed with OFAC, which is making sure that we are not kidnapping people. There's no slave trade going on, et cetera, et cetera. We're doing everything by the book because we know if we don't, we're in trouble. Yeah. Um, and they, we said, we, we've given you the manifest already, and some of your people are on the plane. Uh, some other really important people are on the plane. We had four senators— uh, two congressmen that I know by name, but I think there were six or seven congressmen. 
um, somebody else very high ranking in the Democrat Party that had people on that plane or on those planes. They spent all Tuesday trying to get the State Department let the planes go. By 8 o'clock at night, the Taliban, because, you know, there's one guy like Steve, the Taliban guy, at the airport. And he's like, something's going on. There's planes that aren't taken off. Well, after a few hours, everybody from the Taliban is there. They realize, oh, we're being, yeah. we're being you know, uh, scooped here. So um, those people... Um, are now in the airport, the Taliban. They've taken over. They've made sure that they're running all the ticket counters. We're telling the, the uh, State Department, take off. 11 o'clock at night, I go to bed, and I, the last report I hear is they've got, the, the senators are pit bulls on the State Department. They'll get this done. I go to bed. I do the show the next morning. I get off the air. I get my report at noon. So tell me, where did they land? They said, Glenn, not only did they not land, the State Department, about 1 a.m. our time, told everyone to get off, go down, in back into the terminal, and hand their passports and their papers to the Taliban, and the State Department gave the manifest, that's a kill list, gave it to the Taliban. 